Thank you, Jens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give Huawei the opportunity. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So big player back to Berlin again, and every year we're here in IFA, and we launched a new product today. I will bring the. Today I will bring the two uh, new chipsets and the three products here. To be launched, we will launch it here. Do you remember that uh, two years ago in IFA? We launched the Huawei Kirin 970 chipset. That's the first uh, uh, smartphone flagship smartphone uh, chips which have the AI processor inside. We introducing the NPU, the neural network process, in the smartphone uh, chipset, the Kirin 970. And the last year here in Eva, we launched Kirin uh, 980. It's the first smartphone uh, premium high-end chipset which have the dual AI processor, dual NPU inside. We are leading the mobile uh, AI in the world. You know, that I remember that time when we launched a smartphone which have AI processor inside. Many people ask me, including many media, they ask me, how can you use AI? What's the, what's the usage? Uh, so two years passed, can you see there's more and more apps they are using AI and including the mobile photography, including the many, many things, including the, the traveling, the online shopping, the education, the creation, the, the art creation, many, many things. More and more apps, they are using AI. And you see that uh, last two years, uh, just on Huawei uh, flagship uh, smartphone, the AI API was accessed over 1.6 trillion times. Can you imagine that's so rapid growth? Every year, every month, every day, it's increasing rapidly. So the, today, if you um, design an uh, app that you are not using AI, you know, the functionality, that will be the, <laughs> it will dramatically influence your performance. So AI can do more and more things, the AI. You know, that's uh, two years ago when we launched the Kirin 970 here in IFA. We bring the idea of a mobile AI. That time is a mobile AI we call it 1.0. That's the on-device AI and the cloud AI together. Today, you know, the 5G is coming. Today with 5G, I'm sorry, I'm back to you. Today, on the 5G, with 5G, and we upgrade our mobile AI to 2.0. And what's the mobile AI 2.0? You know, the mobile AI 1.0, that's uh, we have the real-time on-device AI processing. But with the 4G, the limited speed and the limited la latency, so we only have semi-real-time on-cloud inference, on-cloud AI processing. So, but today, on the AI 2.0 with 5G, the 5G have much uh, faster speed, much lower latency, so we can achieve real-time on-cloud AI processing also. So the real-time on-device AI and uh, on-cloud uh, on AI together, so we bring to the mobile AI 2.0. <coughs> you know, uh, last year we launched the first 5G modem, the single mode, uh, mode modem, the 5G01, uh, that's the last year. But uh, in the beginning of this year, we launched the first uh, multi-mode modem, the Balloon 5000, in the beginning of this year. But uh, today, I bring the new, new solution. Oh, yeah. Today, you know, today the, the industry, you know, if you see the, the country we are using, that's uh, the 4G SOC model, uh, chips together with the 5G modem together. You combine together the solution. If the industry, the other vendors, they're all using this. But the Huawei, the product we already launched is the Kirin 980 together with the Balloon 5000. We can support the multi mode multi-mode, the NSA and the SA architecture both. Today, the other solutions only can support the NSA 
architecture. What's the NSA? It's a non-standalone architecture. In the 5G, uh, the beginning, in the beginning, the rollout, the network is using the NSA architecture. But the 5G future should be ASA architecture, the standalone architecture. But we're proud of the Balloon 5000 together with the Kiwi 980. That's, we can support the multi, multi mode, not only multi mode, but also dual architecture. The currently SA, NSA architecture for 5G, but also the future's SA architecture. I, that's, uh, this is the best 5G solution today, not up to now. But today I bring the new one, the new generation. It's the uh, world's first 5G SOC, the revolution of the 5G SOC in the, here. It's a Kirin 990. It's a so small, tiny size. It's smaller than my nail uh, size. But can you believe that how many transistors on it? Over 10 billion transistors on it. 10.3 billion, billion transistors on it. It's the world's first. Thank you. <laughs> it's the world's most powerful 5G SOC chipset. Uh, it's inside this uh, octa-core CPU, the 16-core powerful GPU inside, and also the most advanced ISP, and also the most advanced AI processor inside. But more in importantly, it's the world's the most powerful 5G modem inside this. It is about both SA and NSA architecture. We bring a revolutionary leap in 5G and AI. The Kiwi 990 5G, you know, we bring the best performance on 5G, AI, and the performance. That's the first looks of 5G. You know, today the 5G, uh, the company A, their 5G is not available yet, right? <laughs> this year at least. And then the other companies, their solution is a 4G SOC plus 5G modem. You know that some companies they announced some uh, 5G SOC modem, uh, SOG, SOC chips, but actually it's a PPT uh, uh, chips. It's not uh, available yet, at least in this year. Maybe they are only for the next year. But we, today this chips is already commercialized. So currently the solution is a, a 4G SOC and a 5G modem together. But the Kiwi 90 5G is the first all-in-one 5G chipset. We call SOC system on chip. It's using the world's most advanced 7 nanometer FinFET Plus EUV. Uh, this is the latest uh, semiconductor technology. You see that compared with the others, you can see the, the, the first and also the only uh, flagship 5G SOC, all in one. And also by the only one chip solution, compared with the other two chips together, so we're saving more PCB board space, making it more, si more compact. The board area say, can, sell, can be 36% uh, smaller. That can leave more space for you to install more large battery for your smartphone, or make your phone more compact. <coughs> and on this chipset, over, over 10 billion chances on it. Oh, this. The screen not work. Okay. 10.3 uh, billion transistor on it. Do you remember last year uh, on the Kirin 980, it had 6.9 billion transistor on that Kirin 980. But uh, today, on the uh, Kirin 990 5G, we have uh, over 10 billion transistor on it. And also with the uh, 5G, you can achieve the lightning, super fast 5G speed. On the new radio, NR, uh, the new radio, the uh, download maximum can achieve 2.3 uh, gigabit per second. How fast it is? Let's see that on the China Mobile's real network, real network test, on real commercial network, it can reach the more than 1.7 gigabit per second. See that? How fast it is? You will download uh, near two gig gigabyte uh, the, uh, the video uh, the apps. You can see that in just uh, several seconds they're doing that. It's much faster than the the, the 4G. 
and also music download can see how fast the sudden uh, immediately you download a uh, HD uh, movie it's just the several second you can download that it's unbelievable speed it's really super fast I know today the challenge for 5g uh, uh, is uh, firstly I think it will be the weak signal why the weak signal because in the beginning the limited radio base station site the limited coverage uh, and also the 5g is running more on um, more higher frequency so the indoor penetration also the, also the issues so you always meet the weak signal in the beginning of the 5g rollout and also the power consumption issue for the 5g and also speed uh, especially on high speed moving how can we guarantee the still have 5g uh, super fast speed 5G. So how can we solve these kind of issues? We bring our solution, the smart uplink speed to conquer the weak signal. If, we, if you are in the weak 5G signal area, you have a good 5, 4G connection, you can combine these two together. So combine the 4G and the 5G uplink, we can achieve some time, in some area, we can achieve 5.8 times faster speed in the weak 5G signal area. And also, we have the, to save the energy. Sometimes you don't need a so fast speed you tra transmit. But we, but we introducing the BWP, the bandwidth part. Well, with the bandwidth part on, you don't need a so large bandwidth, and you can make network width, then you can save the power consumption. You can see that uh, with the BWP on, bandwidth part on, you can save 15% of the power consumption. Compared with the other chips, uh, chipset, we can save in 44% less um, power consumption. So less power consumption is very critical for 5G. So we have the solution for this to save the energy. If you're in a full speed of the 5G, we still can achieve the 20% better efficiency. You can see the com uh, comparison with the other modem, other solution. You can see the 20% less power consumption with a full speed running. And also we have the, for the fast moving, when you know, in a fast speed car or, tr or railway, uh, uh, over even over 120 km per hour, the fast speed, we still can achieve high speed by our new technology, by our additional beam forming gain technology. Machine learning uh, based on the uh, channel model, uh, it's an advanced adaptive receiver to secure the 5G speed on high uh, speed move. And also, this, uh, this chipset, the QV 990 we support the advanced dual SIM card. We not only support the dual SIM card, dual voltage, but uh, uh, when one phone is making phone call, another SIM card can accept, uh, can receive the voltage phone call coming. Also, we can support one SIM card is a you know, uh, phone call. Another SIM card, we can s using the 5G date simultaneously. The other phone, uh, other chipset, they cannot support this. So this brings uh, us the leading performance on dual SIM card. And also, the more importantly, this uh, QV 990 5G is not designed not only for today, the 5G, but also for future. The future of the 5G network should be SA architecture, standalone architecture. Stand SA architecture have better performance, lower latency, so we support this uh, chipset not only for today, but also for future. <coughs> you know, today, the 5G, uh, we not only the Q9, not only bring the best 5G, but also bring the best AI. You will see that uh, from the last gen in every generation, we are leading the AI performance. You can see on QV 970, uh, two years ago, uh, up to last year, QV 980, we are all leading the AI performance. Today on the QV 990 5G, we have uh, over three times higher AI performance compared with the industry, the other vendors. We are leading on AI performance. If you see the last two years ourselves, we have 12 times AI performance enhancement in the last two years. 
you know that we are not, we not only provide the best, uh, the most powerful AI processing capability, but also bring the best energy efficiency. You will see that uh, on the, the mobile, uh, mobile net is a uh, uh, light mode, the light mode uh, comparison, and our performance is much better than the others. But even in the, on the heavy load, we also our performance, the uh, ResNet 50, is a heavy, heavy, uh, heavy load model, you will still have much better performance. But more importantly, the energy efficiency, no matter in light mode or heavy mode, we all achieved much stronger uh, energy efficiency, even up to eight times more uh, better efficiency. I think the, the energy efficiency is uh, the key, is more important, because of phones, the power efficiency, always uh, uh, phones battery life is always the biggest issue. <coughs> And more importantly, you know, if you let the apps using the fully using AI capability, they need more AI operator support. We support over 300 AI operators, but the other only can support 100 level, so three times higher. With more AI operators, you can let the apps fully use the AI capability. And also, we can support multi standard of AI. The high AI is a Huawei AI standard, AI platform, but we also support the Facebook TensorFlow AI platform. And in the same time, we also support the Google's Android N AI platform. <coughs> so we can support the multi-platform uh, uh, AI. <coughs> you know that this time we're also introducing a very innovative uh, the new architecture for the AI processing. Uh, we call it the big, tiny uh, core, uh, combination architecture. But inside this is the big, uh, the big core. We are using the new generation, the first, well, the world first Da Vinci uh, architecture, the most powerful AI processor in, in this world. Uh, by this, the big and the tiny uh, combination, and it will bring the high performance but also low power consumption. How can we achieve that? So we give an example that like, like a, a truck, using the, the big truck to take the, the heavy load, uh, the goods. But uh, you only have big truck, you will take small goods, you also need the, you need the big truck, the, the big waste. So, and more complex. But our solution, like this, the big car for the big, uh, big traffic, uh, for, the big, for the big goods like the truck, and the small one, we're using a small truck, so we can achieve the best performing, lower power consumption, low consumption. So we achieve the best efficiency. So by this technology, I give you example for the using the AI for the uh, for the face detection. For example, we can achieve the 24 times better efficiency, energy efficient compared with the others by this big and big core and little core together. Big and a tiny core together. So really high efficiency. You know that's uh, on the Q980, the AI processor we can support a single, a single instance segmentation. But today on this Q980, uh, 990, we can support multi instance segmentation. Let's see how it works. I see on this video that uh, we can, a group of people together, we can ch change the background, the real time change the, the video, uh, the background, and also we can, can move some people away, or even can enlarge some people to make this group the AI real time processing. So this shows how strong AI processing power on these uh, chips. 
You know, this Q990, uh, 995G will not only bring the best 5G and uh, AI, also have the best performance. Let's see inside this. And then we have octa-core CPU, but with the leading architecture. We call it the big, middle, and the little architecture. Big, big, middle, and little. Two big core for high performance. Two middle core for medium uh, performance, also for low power consumption. And four little core for actual low power consumption. This combination, you can see that with the big core, the performance improved uh, compared with the industry's other uh, chips. So around 10% better performance and also around near 10% of the energy efficiency for the multi, uh, uh, for, the, for the performance, or multi-core performance. But uh, more importantly, you know, the power efficiency is the key. Today, you know, the CPU, the performance, even more than the, the smartphones needed. But the more important is the energy efficiency. The energy efficiency, you know, you see on the middle core, we can achieve the near 35% improvement. That's a lot. And uh, no matter in big core and the little core and the middle core, we all achieve the better energy efficiency. By this combination uh, together, we can always have the best energy efficiency. I think that's the most important than the CPU, the performance itself. The energy efficiency is the key. Today, on the QE990 uh, uh, 5GV, upgrade the, our GPU core from the 10 core to 16 core. Uh, yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, I uh, see the news. Some wonder they launched uh, the new uh, the PPT uh, um, 5G modem. Uh, 5G modem. They are using their core just uh, five GP, uh, GPU core, but we have 16, more than three times. Uh, the, so, <coughs> so we have achieved the best performance because the GPU is very important for today's mobile gaming. Many people, they are using the mobile phones and mobile gaming. But I think that the, the GPU, the, the graphical processing, uh, the most important is not just the performance, but also more importantly, the energy efficiency, the power efficiency. So we, we achieved over 20% better energy efficiency compared with the industry, the others. The graphical uh, processing, you can see it's 20% better on this. <coughs> And also, we're introducing smart cache uh, between the CPU, GPU, and the NPU, the L2, L3 cache, with the DDR. So with this, we can save 15% uh, the bandwidth. But also, power consumption can achieve the 20% lower. <coughs> now, this is a, the mobile game, the very popular game. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so you can see that we achieve the high free, uh, frame rate uh, but also much lower power consumption. The red, the red character, you can see that the power consumption is lower. So uh, you, you can play the game more smoothly, but the power consumption is much lower than the others. You can see the, you can read the, the red uh, character. <coughs> you know that's where in this chipset, we're also introducing the fifth generation the ISP, the imaging signal processor. The imaging processor is mainly for the photo and the video. Uh, you know, that's uh, for you taking photo in a low light uh, condition and taking video in a low light condition. We can achieve the, the imaging noise reduction uh, over 30% reduction. And the, you may take the video, the video noise reduction also over 20% reduction. On the, so it's very, very important. <coughs> I assure you that in, on these chips, we're introducing the world first. BM3D, what's BM3D? It's a professional DSLR, DSLR camera. They are using the imaging noise reduction uh, technologies. Now we move to the QV990. You can see that uh, compared with the last generation, in the low light photography, you can see the, this uh, wall ball, the, the fiber, uh, the detail, you can see that very clearly in the very low light. Uh, environment, you take a photo from it. And also, in the low light, the video we're taking, you can see the noise. Compared with the last generation, you can see it's uh, much less noise, the video noise. You know, with this 
powerful ISP capability and also powerful AI capability. We can do a lot of things, like these girls. We use the camera to see this girl's face. We can recognize her real-time heartbeat and also her birth, birth rate, heartbeat rate and birth rate. You can read that from the camera. It's unbelievable <laughs> because they're so, so, so pro strong processing power. You let the phone's camera see this, this girl, the heartbeat, but, uh, heartbeat rate, you can see that. <laughs> Health AR can also recognize your Even respiratory rate, best rate and more. So you can see that. <laughs> we use this video just to show our strong capability of the processor. That makes something unbelievable things. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> you know, this uh, QE990 uh, 5G, uh, we also bring the 4G version for these chips. Uh, the main difference is this uh, the modem. Uh, they only the, the this is about 5G, another uh, only about 2G, 3G, and 4G. And uh, one is using a seven nanometer, another is using a seven nanometer uh, FinFET Plus EUA. And uh, the NPU core, the two big core and the one big core, but uh, the NPU AI processor is uh, have uh, the leading uh, performance already. That's the QE990 and QE990 5G. We have two. For, for selection. <clears throat> so ladies and gentlemen, the Q990 uh, 5G is the world's most powerful uh, flagship 5G SOC. It's, a, it's the world's first 5G SOC we can support dual architecture, NSA and SA architecture, have the most powerful uh, leading semiconductor technology, seven nanometer thin fat plus EUA, and also have the most powerful the GPU core, 16 core uh, Mali G76 GPU inside. And also the most powerful, the big, tiny uh, combination architecture NPU AI processor inside. And also the most powerful ISP uh, inside. And no matter, no matter on, you can hear the comparison uh, with others. No matter on the 5G, on AI, and the dual SIM, SIM card capability on the NPU, uh, GPU, and all, all of that. Um, you can see all the benchmark we are leading the best, the best performing, the best performing the SOC chipset. So QE95G, they are leading the industry 5G, AI, and the performance. You know, that's we will uh, launch our Mate uh, 30 uh, series smartphone in two weeks later in, uh, in Munich, in the 16th uh, of this month. And, uh, this